Hi, I'm Brita, the questioning quilter, and due to popular demand, this month's quilt is Christmas in July. Now, as with most of my videos, I've got multiple versions. The first version is this one, and as you can see, it's got solid green trees with the red stripe at the bottom. Version number two is this one where the trees are half green and half white. It's a fun, easy quilt, can be made with five inch charms if you like, or yardage. It's the second in my series on disappearing Grecian squares. And if you hang around to the very end, I have an extra bonus layout for you. Let's get started. Step one for this quilt is to make block number one, which is a Grecian square. And this is the positive version of the Grecian square. Now, I say that this charm pack friendly because all of the pieces of this block can be made with five inch charms. So the first piece we're gonna make is bar blocks. And so if you took a five inch charm and you cut it in half, you would have a piece of fabric that's two and a half by five. So you'll have two white and two green. If you alternate these and you sew them together, you will end up with the bar blocks that when sewn together are four and a half by five. Now, alternately, if you're not doing charms, if you're doing yardage, you can cut strips of fabric that are two and a half inches wide, one white, one green, sew them together, and then you can cut right there a five inch piece, open it up, press it to the dark, and you have a rectangle block. Now, Again, this is four and a half by five. Note that it is a rectangle, not a square. And we're going to need four of these for this block. Now, the next thing we need is we need half square triangles. These are going to be four and a half by four and a half, and we need four of them. These can also be made with five inch charms. I show how to do that on my first video. I'll have a link down below. And then the last piece is a five inch by five inch square. This is going to be the center of the block. So to make this block, we're just gonna take these bar blocks and we're going to arrange them around the outside here. Now notice we have the white touching the red. So it makes like a little frame around this or a border around this center square. Now we're going to put the half square triangles in and we're going to arrange them so that the dark is pointed in and the white triangle is to the outside. And this is the Grecian square, even though it's an octagon. Notice you'll see, you'll know that it's right because it makes an octagon like a stop sign. And when it's all sewn together, it looks just like this. Block number two is a negative Grecian square. Notice it's just like the first one, except that where the first one had a green octagon, this has a white octagon. So everywhere that was dark before is now light. Everywhere that was light before is now dark. So it starts off, we're gonna need the same sorts of pieces. We're gonna need four of these four and a half inch half square triangles. We're going to need one five inch square of white for the center, and we're gonna need four of these bar blocks. And again, they measure four and a half by five. They are rectangles. Now we're gonna build this where before we had red in the center, we now have white in the center, and we have the red touching the center just like that. Now, as a quick little side note, if we put these half square triangles in like this, this would be a churn dash. And let me know if you want to see me make some disappearing churn dash quilts. But instead, to make the Grecian square, we're going to turn this around so that see the white is to the inside and the dark is to the outside. So again, this is the negative Grecian square. Notice, the green is to the outside corners, and we have a white octagon. And again, once it's all sewn together, it will look like this. 
So here are the positive and negative Grecian squares right next to each other. Here's the positive, here's the negative. Now to, quote, disappear these blocks, we're going to cut each of these into four equal pieces. And to do that, the calculation is simple. You take this middle section and you measure it, in this case, four and a half. And then we divide that by two, so that's two and a quarter. So we measure two and a quarter inches from this seam here. So we make one vertically and one horizontally. This will make four even pieces. We do the same thing to the negative Grecian square, two and a quarter. Now, this is the reason why these bar blocks had to be rectangles instead of squares. Because we're making a seam here, when we sew them back together, we need these pieces will be square then when we take into account that quarter inch seam allowance. Now we have these cut up and this is going to make two blocks. So we're going to start off with block number one. So we're going to take this green corner, we're going to turn it around. So these two green corners make the top of the Christmas tree. Now we're going to take two of the positive pieces and move them down here. And this will make the bottom of the Christmas tree. Notice that these angles are parallel to each other so that they look like the branches of a Christmas tree. The bottom here, this red is connected to the red. And we're going to make a second block here. So we have the negative pieces, the two green ones to form the top of the tree. Then we turn this around. So now we have two Christmas trees. And if you notice, we have a white Christmas tree that's upside down. Once the blocks are sewn together, making the quilt is really easy. There's no sort of special orientation or rotation. We're just putting them together just the same way that we made them. Just like this, and we keep putting them together, and when they're all done, it looks like this. Here's layout one. Pretty nice, right? It's got a row of green Christmas trees and strings of either red lights or ornaments, whatever you want to think about it. You've got the white trees coming down. Now, if you decided instead of using yardage that you had some Christmas charm packs, or you have some red and green scraps that you want to use up, that's what this would look like. Now, to the other layout. Block number two starts off just like block number one. You've got a positive and a negative Grecian square, and we're going to use two pieces from each. We're going to take this, see this green is going to go to the center, and here's where we start to go different. See this white corner? It's going to go here. So we've got green and white trees in this one. So the top of the tree is green and white. And the bottom of the tree, if we take this here, we're going to turn, see the green corner now goes up. And again, we've got this kind of parallel line. So here's the white tree. And we take another piece of the positive Grecian square and go over here. So you see the half green, half white tree, and we're going to put this, put two of them together because we have those pieces. And again, so here we have the top of the tree. We've got green and white, and then the bottom half of the tree. So this is the negative. So we've got the green and green here. We've got this parallel line. And we take this and we put this in. And so we have parallel lines here, we have these reds going up and down, and we have an upside down green and white tree here as well. Once you get all of number two block sewn, it goes together just as easily as the other layout. We just put them together just the way we made them. Put them all up and they look like this. This is my favorite layout. I love how the trees are half green and half white, and I really like how these red squares just go in a beautiful wave up and down. And here it is made with scraps or charms, whichever one you like. 
Now, the only thing to be aware of when you're making this with scraps do you see how the trees, each tree is a different shade of green, which is beautiful. But when you're putting this together, you should make sure that each tree itself is made of all the same fabric or very similar fabrics. It really makes it look a lot better. Now, before I show you the final layout, I have a really quick question to ask. Would you like this to be an annual event that every July is a Christmas quilt? Or would you prefer the holiday quilts to be, well, closer to the holidays. I really want to know. So now here's the final layout. It's going to start. The first row will be just like the very first row. You see, just like that. Now on the second row, we're going to put them upside down. So one, two, three, four. And then the final row, we're going to put them right side up again. Now, this is just a really fun quilt. It's not as Christmassy, but I think it's still pretty cool. So thank you so much for watching. See you next month. Stay well and happy quilting.